we bring Dandelion a nice fat perch and he just might forget about the rabbit stew. Hmm. Shame he didn't come along. He could use a bit of exertion. Huh. Whew, it's cold. I'll be damned. Should we go? No, no way. Lake's gotta be full of perch, bream, or pollard. Hmm, fresh pollard. Would you like that? I wouldn't mind some, but do we plan to wait here until he leaves? No, we'll scare him off. How? I'll improvise. Wait here. Witcher's trick for tough winters. Not terribly subtle, but... Effective? Mm-hmm. Remember, don't ever do this. But why show it to me at all, then? Just in case. You never know what could happen on the path, what could save your life. All right, let's go. Who taught you that? Vesemir. A long time ago. How long? Very. Back when I wanted to call myself Geralt Roger Eric Duot Belagarci. What? Tell you about it tonight. And about the time you broke your leg after wagering you jump off the roof of Cam Morhen and land a horse's back? Huh. How do you even know about that? <laughs> Eskel told me. But I want to hear you tell it. I'm certain you have a rational explanation. <laughs> you never gave me piggyback rides at Cam Morhen, remember? Vesemir was the only one willing. <laughs> huh? Had to wait till now to remind me? You've put on some weight since Kaer Morin. We should get back. Remember me training on the pendulum? How I feared I'd never manage, yet you forbade me from giving up. <laughs> I was black and blue practically all the time. That pendulum was a nightmare. How could I forget? Those months at Care Morn. They passed so quickly. I wish we'd spent more time together then. Almost managed to forget it was today. They're here for me, Geralt. I'm going to Nilfgaard, to Emir. I know you didn't expect this, but in Vizima, my father and I spoke for long, argued really, and parted. Then a messenger came with a letter. 
I didn't say anything at first because I wasn't sure, and then I realized I had to stop fleeing. I realized that if I wish to change anything, I cannot do so hunting monsters around forgotten villages. I must do so from there, from Nilfgaard. You could have told me, warned me. I wanted to, but I didn't know how. I've been happy here. I was afraid I'd ruin it. I wanted to make every minute count. So, back at the nest, I was about this. I didn't pry, didn't want to force you to tell me. Thought we had time, a lot more time. You make this choice on your own? If you mean to suggest Yennefer had anything to do with this, then the answer is no. Great. She even know? No. And I'd prefer she not get involved this time. I'll let you tell her that. Is this what you want? Yes. You're not trying to stop me. Take me to the Blue Mountains by force. Traveled half the world to find you, but I never intended to force anything on you. I know. You'll be fine. You're a witcher. We needn't say goodbye. Of course we don't. I don't know when we'll see each other again. You know where to find me. You can't possibly stay at Kaer Morhen all the time. Makes no difference. You'll find me. <laughs> True. Remember what I taught you. Never know. Could be useful there too. The Third Northern War ended. The invader from the south achieved complete victory. Robbed of Radovid's tactical genius, the Northern realms could not withstand Emir's countless legions. Black banners appeared over Novigrad and all Redania. Weary of rebel raids, Emir Varemris conceded, restoring Temeria as a realm in liege to the Empire. When the guerrillas laid down their arms, the Emperor shifted his forces to other fronts. Through Nilfgaard's victory, Temerians got their country back, and history once again proved a consummate trickster. Having dealt with Radovid, Emir of Vardemris did the same with enemies domestic. The Emperor's loyal spies named all who had conspired against him traitors, soldiers, and aristocrats alike. Though their mutiny had only been a murky plan, the Emperor showed no mercy, as was his wont. While the continent bled engulfed by war, Skellica bloomed under Ceres's enlightened rule. 
Unlike those who had come before her, the young queen did not raid foreign shores, looking instead to her people, tending to her land. The island-bound nation prospered, though its fangs of yore were dulled. After years in exile, Ciri returned to Nilfgaard, her paternal home, where Emir prepared to name her his successor. The woman had the necessary qualities. From her father, she'd inherited an empress's political instincts. From Geralt, she had gained a sense of simple human decency. Few monarchs boast both traits, which is quite a shame. While monarchs moved borders and populations, Geralt and Yennefer lived a calm, quiet life, far from all things political. They breakfasted well after noon, more often than not in bed, and passed the days on lazy strolls and long conversations.